heard you before, and it's wonderful.
Good morning. Good morning. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we join in our call to worship. God of every country, thank you for this country, for its beauty from coast to coast. Thank you for the American people, rich in cultural diversity, from First Nations and many nations. You have a vision of what peace is. Help us live in that peace and toward that peace. Help us to be a people of vision, courage, and commitment, offering your hope and comfort to all we meet. You may be seated. And welcome to First Parish Church, Manchester by the Sea. I am Reverend Catherine Schofield, honored to be your pastor. For over 300 years, this congregation has weathered the storms of uncertainty, created a safe harbor of companionship and love, and cried out against cruel injustice and hate. And we're not done yet because the fight for freedom and equality and the dignity of every person is not a one-time deal. We gather to worship and to affirm the beauty and blessedness of the diversity of humankind and to refill our cups as we continue the fight for justice. No matter who you are, where you are from, what you look like, or where you are on your spiritual journey, welcome. We are so glad you're with us today. Today's service is a little different. We'll have some special readings, some poetry, some prayer and music, and a special advanced thank you to all of our readers for today. Uh, turning to announcements, I want to let you all know about the amazingly fantastic Breakfast Buddies program we had this last week. Miss Jean ran mornings all, all week long, Monday to Friday. We had seven kids every day, and we learned about animals from the Bible, and everybody had a wonderful time, and uh, it was just such a gift to be all together. Um, thank you, Jean, for going above and beyond to make it really, truly amazing. Thank you also to all of our volunteers who helped with the red, white, and blue breakfast out at Tux yesterday. That was also an amazing event. I think we served around like a thousand people, and uh, Liz was there putting whipped cream on everybody's pancakes, and <laughs> it was just a great time. So thank you, everybody who volunteered. We are also gearing up for the Festival by the Sea, the Fair by the Sea, and we're gathering donations for our community yard sale which is Saturday, August 3rd. So donations will be accepted at the Chapel Hall on Wednesdays in July from 11 to 1 and Sundays in July from 10 to 12. Volunteers are welcome and encouraged to come by the Chapel Hall on Wednesdays from 11 to 1 or 2 to help organize and display the donated items. We'll be putting together a sign-up sheet for baked goods, coolers, ice, and other needed items for that day, and we're looking for volunteers to help between 9.30 and 2.30 on the day of the fair. So you can let Bethany know. Wave, Bethany. Uh, or you can let Nancy in the office know as well. I also want to say a special welcome to Aaron Mercurio Nelson, who's our guest vocalist today. Thank you for being with us, Aaron. And a big reminder... A big reminder, next week, I hope you're going to come to church, but what time are you going to come? Nine o'clock. We will move an hour earlier for the summertime, for the months of July and August, so come at nine or you're going to miss the whole thing. All right, let us continue our worship together by singing our opening hymn, God of the Ages, number 592.
Our first reading is Help Us to Work with Renewed Vigor by Martin Luther King, Jr. Most gracious and all-wise God, before whose face the generations rise and fall, thou in whom we live and move and have our being, we thank thee for all thy good and gracious gifts, for life and for health, for food and for raiment, for the beauties of nature and human nature. We come before thee painfully aware of our inadequacies and shortcomings. We realize that we stand surrounded with the mountains of love and we deliberately dwell in the valley of hate. We stand amid the forces of truth and deliberately lie. We are forever offered the high road and yet we choose to travel the low road. For these sins, O oh God, forgive. Break the spell of that which blinds our minds. Purify our hearts that we may see. O oh God, in these turbulent days, when fear and doubt are mounting high, give us broad visions, penetrating eyes, and power of endurance. Help us to work with renewed vigor for a warless world for a better distribution of wealth, and for a brotherhood that transcends race or color. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with us. Let us greet one another with a sign of peace.
First, can everybody hear me? Okay. I am here this morning to read that great speech by President Abraham Lincoln, the Gettysburg Address. I'll give a little preface here. Delivered at the dedication of the Soldiers National Cemetery at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, Thursday, November 19th, 1863. Yes, George, I added the day. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground the brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little know, no longer remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, shall not perish from the earth. God bless President Abraham Lincoln. God bless all you people here. One more. And God bless America. Amen. Thank you, Fran. Let us pray together. Gracious God of love, we are grateful that you have revealed yourself to us, each of us loved by you as children, each of us precious in your sight, each of us a reflection of you, each of us bound together by love which is, in fact, your presence among us. We come to you, O oh God, weary and carrying heavy burdens, personal burdens of illness, loss, and grief, painful hurts of the past and fears about the future. And recognizing our connectedness with all of your creation, we use our voices and hearts to cry out, on behalf of those who do not have a safe place to sleep or enough food to eat, those who experience oppression and injustice, who struggle with depression and addiction, and all those injured by violence of word or deed. We thank you, almighty God, for this our country, our sweet land of freedom, a haven of hope, and above all, our home and inheritance. As we approach Independence Day, we recognize that our nation also bears many burdens, not only the sins of the past, decimation of indigenous communities, slavery, religious intolerance, but also the challenges of our present, the politics of expediency, our lack of prophetic courage, 
our distrust of leaders and systems, our deep divisions and short-sightedness, our addictions to consumption and violence. Deliver us, O oh God. We consecrate this day to the celebration of the sacred ideals of justice and independence, which brought it to birth. We praise you, our creator, for our nation's beauty, its snow-capped mountains, ancient forests, and shimmering deserts, its mighty cities, and its rural quiet, its roaring seashores, crystal clear springs, still lakes, and coursing rivers, its hills and caverns, its plowed fields, and echoing wilderness. For everything good in the reasons that brought us here, a spirit of adventure, a triumph over all odds, determination for deliverance, desire for opportunity, a quest for education, a passion for exploring, love of family, a sense of mission, we thank you. For all of the many places from which we have come that, that have given each of us strength to share, we praise and thank you. How blessed and rich we are in one another. From this vast reservoir of ability, intelligence, and talent, O Lord, let us draw fully and together meet the challenges of our day. Let us not rest, O Lord, until we have ushered in the day when children of every color, creed, and condition may without barrier or impediment partake equally in opportunities to fulfill the potential with which you have endowed them. May we who have so prospered under the blessings of our birthright, extend those blessings across every boundary of privilege and prejudice. Inspire our determination to fulfill our nation's highest pledge. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may with courage and wisdom contend with every tyranny yet unconquered in our midst. Call to our remembrance the sacrifice and foresight of our nation's founders, that we may not retreat into merely private pursuits, but rise to the call of duty in our day as they did in theirs. Grant that we too may live not merely for the present or for ourselves, but that we may serve the future with action in accordance with our best traditions. We who are first citizens of your kingdom, O God, seek your guidance, that we may also be good citizens of our country. Strengthen and enlighten us by your grace, that our love of country may express itself in our love and care of one another. Deliver us from meager, sentimental patriotism. Give us hearts that seek to serve our beloved country, that our precious freedom may not idly be squandered in vain, and self-centered pursuits not be perverted into practices that deny it to others, but ever be directed to its safekeeping and the preservation of that expansive liberty of mind, heart, and will, which you, O oh Lord, first gave to us. In the name of Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Today's scripture is Psalms 33, verses 13 through 22. From heaven, God looks down and sees all of humankind. From God's dwelling place, God watches all who live on earth. God who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is safe by the size of an army. No warrior escapes by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all of its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of God are on those who fear God, on those whose hope is in God's unfailing love to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for our God. God is our help and our shield. In God, our hearts rejoice, for we trust in God's holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, God, even as we put our hope in you. Good morning. I am reading a poem by Medicine Julius Pound. It is called On Old Cape N by the Summer Sea. Sunlight and shrill cicada and the low, slow, sleepy kissing of the sea and shore and rumor of the wind. The morning wore a sullen face of fog that lifted slow, letting her eyes gleam through of grayest glow, wearing a look like that which once we wore, she wore when Gloucesterward from Dogtown there, they bore some old witch wife with many a jibe and blow. But now the day has put off every care and sits at peace beside the smiling sea, dreaming bright dreams with lazy lidded eyes. One is a castle, precipiced in air, and one a golden galleon. Can it be? Tis but the cloud world of the sunset skies? My name is Paul Langiza, I'm pinch hitting for uh, Jason Smith, who unfortunately is uh, home with COVID. My four grandparents each immigrated from Poland to the United States. At the unimaginable early age of 13, they said goodbye to their parents, sailed across the Atlantic, and were greeted by the magnificent Lady Liberty that stands in the harbor outside of New York City. So it's with deep gratitude for their courage and with deep love of country that I share with you the poem from Emma Lazarus, The New Colossus, which is embrazened, casted in bronze within, inside, the Statue of Liberty. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand, 
a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome, her mild eyes command, the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands, your storied pomp, cries she, with silent lips, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. I'm going to read a, a poem by Lola Ridge. She was born in Dublin. She immigrated to the United States and died in the 1940s in Brooklyn. To the others. I see you, refulgent ones, burning so steadily like big white arc lights. There are so many of you. I like to watch you weaving all together and each with precision each his ray, your tracery of light making a shining way about America. I notice your infinite reactions in glassware and sequin and puddles and bits of jet and here and there a diamond. But you do not yet see me, who am a torch blown along the wind, flickering to a spark, but never out. We give thanks today for this country, for its beauty from coast to coast, for the people of this land rich in cultural diversity, indigenous and immigrant. We gather with our hopes, with our hearts, open to God's enduring justice and with our minds to God's breathtaking liberty. We are called to be people of vision, courage and commitment to give of ourselves for the building up of a nation with true liberty and justice for all people. Let's invest in our communities. Let's invest in helping those most in need. Let's invest in the good and hard work of repentance and transformation. Let's invest in hope. This morning's offering will now be given and received.
Please be seated. Good morning. This morning I'm reading a prayer from Reverend William Stone Coffin, Independence Day Prayer, 1983. O oh God, mightily we pray for wisdom, courage, and strength to serve thee and this nation faithfully in the days that lie ahead. Remind us of our duty to promote the general welfare, to secure the blessings of liberty for all, to see, it, see to it that justice and compassion reign from sea to shining sea, and that the beautiful resources of a favored land are not only thankfully received, but also gladly shared with the whole human family. Amen. And now let us rise in body or in spirit as we join in singing number 594, How Beautiful Our Spacious Skies. be gracious to us. May God give us courage never to sell ourselves short, courage to resist evil, courage to risk something big for something good. 
May God take our minds and think through them. May God take our lips and speak through them. May God take our hearts and set them on fire. And let the whole church say, Amen. Amen. Oh.